following takes place between midnight and 1 a.m. Events occur in real time. Hi folks and welcome to Open Analysis Live. So we're back after a small hiatus. Again, apologies for the breaks. We've just been working on these projects on the side and some other announcements that we're gonna make in a little bit that should be kind of exciting for you guys, but it's just a lot on the plate. So we aren't posting as often as we should be. What I wanna talk about today is a new piece of malware. Well, an old piece of malware that's been revitalized and it's been making some headlines lately and that is TrickBot. So in the month of May, uh, we noticed tons of spam campaigns pushing out TrickBot and there's been some new developments in the malware, nothing major, but definitely worth talking about. And so what I did was I selected one of the samples, one of the recent samples from the end of May to show you guys how to unpack it. And then once it's unpacked, there's a few open source tools that you can use to extract the configuration file from it. And I'll just walk you guys through how to do that. So the sample that we're gonna look at is one that I pulled from malwaretrafficanalysis.net. Some awesome work from Brad over there. If you guys haven't checked it out, definitely check it out. I'll put a link to it in the description of the video below. And on his site for each piece of malware that he analyzes, he also includes a zip file with the malware in it. So you guys don't have to go to VirusTotal or Malshare or anything like that. You can actually just download it directly from his site. So you can check that out if, if you want the sample. So the first place I went when I want to take a look at the sample was hybrid analysis. And that's to take a look at the process tree to see what sort of packing techniques might be involved here. So let's go and take a look at that first. Here we go. And I'll scroll down to the process tree down here. So we can see here's the original sample that I uploaded or that was uploaded before me. I think it was already run by the time I looked up the hash. And then you can see that it starts another version of itself. Generally, when you see something like that, where a malware runs a copy of itself, it's probably doing some injection in here. So we're probably looking for process injection when we go to unpack the sample. So let's hop over to our VM and we'll load up our usual tools and see if we can't unpack this thing and get to the TrickBot payload. So for our VM today, we're using a Windows 7 32-bit version, and we have the usual tools, PE Bear, x 64 debug, and a hex editor installed. I've also dropped a a Python script here that I will link in the description below. It's from a neat project from someone called Kevin the Hermit. You might have heard of this, uh, where he actually has a GitHub project and he collects open source configuration extractors for different malware families. It's kind of cool because the work that other reverse engineers have done, you can reuse yourself once you've unpacked the samples. Now, the thing is you can't actually use these unless the malware is unpacked. So what I'm going to show you guys here is how to unpack it. And then we'll use his tool to actually extract the configuration configuration file. So the thing to keep in mind before we dive in here is that the packers that are being used here by TrickBot are not actually developed by the malware authors, or if they are, they're just throwaway things. They're not reused very often. They're, these are like commodity packers. A lot of times they're found on like underground forums and stuff like that. They're not really linked to the malware itself. So like the, you can't really take the packer and say like, okay, this packer belongs to TrickBot. It's just a commodity packer and they're switched out a lot of times. So the techniques that we're showing you here will work for other packers that TrickBot is using, but TrickBot won't be using the same packer every time. Like I mentioned in May, there's a wave of mouse spam by TrickBot and the packer that they were using was switching all the time. So they're using different ones and it doesn't really matter again, what the packer is. It's, it's not a really of interest to us because we have these techniques that we can use to unpack it and it's pretty simple to, to bypass to get to the payload. So to take a look at this, let's load up our sample here. So I've dropped the sample onto the desktop here and let's load it up in x64 debug, which is x32 debug because it's a 32-bit VM. So let's drop this over. And I'm also going to run Process Explorer, which I've renamed as God Mode here. I just renamed it in case there's any check for uh, Process Explorer as a string in one of the running processes, uh, which th I don't think there is, but you know, it's always good to, to just have that check uh, just in case. Okay, so now that we have the binary loaded up, we can set our breakpoints. And because we know that it's, well, we don't know, but, but we suspect pretty strongly that it's process injection. So let's set uh, breakpoints on create process internal, resume thread, and write process memory. And we'll see if we can't catch it creating a process and then writing the unpacked binary to the process. And if it's doing that, we can just kind of carve out that unpacked binary and take a look at it. I did do a walk through this before the video and there's actually two stages. So that's why I thought this was an exciting sample for you guys to look at. And the stages are actually different in the way that they pack. So we'll I'll show you that when we get to that. But uh, that's why I chose this and I, I think it's kind of an interesting one. For the first stage, process injection. So we'll just do control G, create, process internal W and we'll set a breakpoint on that. And we're going to set a breakpoint on a resume thread, set a breakpoint here and on 
the right process memory. Now, for those of you who have watched some of our other tutorials, I have explained in depth how this actually works, but I'll just go over it really quickly before we dive into the debugger. So basically what they'll do is they'll spawn a new process. They will write, well, they'll unpack the binary somewhere in memory inside this process, and then they will write that unpacked memory into the spawned process and then resume it. So they, they'll actually start it uh, suspended and then they'll resume it. So what we're gonna do is with these three breakpoints, we're gonna watch when the process is created then we're going to watch write process memory and see where that buffer is, where the unpacked payload is being copied into the new process. And then we're going to see if we can just carve out that payload out of the buffer and take a look at it. So hence the three breakpoints. And the reason why we do resume thread is because in case they're not using write process memory, they might be using another technique like map view of section. Again, I've explained that in another tutorial, but if they use that technique and we see resume thread called on that newly created process, then we'll know that we missed this step because we didn't see the unpacked PE being written into that process. So we'll know that we need to go back and set more breakpoints. So that's why we set the three breakpoints. We expect create process internal, we expect write process memory, and we have resume thread as a stopgap uh, to say, oh, we missed the step. Let's stop and, and go back and try and figure out what went wrong. With that, let's uh, start it up and let it rip. So we hit our entry point, always set with x64 debug. So uh, no big deal there. We'll just continue on. So then we hit a create process internal, which is exactly what we expected. And if we sort of move this over a little bit so we can see what the buffer is that contains the name of the process, we can see that it's actually recreating a new process with the same exact binary, which is what we saw in hybrid analysis. So all good there. So let's continue on and we'll see if we can't see a write process memory. Hey, write process memory, <laughs> right on cue. So basically what we need to do is we need to look at the stack here and we need to look at the arguments that were passed to write process memory. So the first argument on the stack is going to be the, pro the handle to the process that they want to write to. The second argument on the stack is going to be the address of the process that, that they want to write to. So the base address where they're going to write the data. And the third argument on the stack is going to be a pointer to the buffer where the data is contained. So if we look here, 3C is the handle, the uh, base address is four and five zeros and the buffer is right here. It's 43020 something. So let's follow that D word in our dump here. And <laughs> look at that. It's a nice PE file. It looks like we have found our PE file that we want to dump out and take a look at. That's pretty easy, wasn't it? <laughs> First stage here is pretty straightforward. Now, again, we could have actually let it write into the new process, and then we could have actually dumped that new process and tried to fix up the entry point uh, in case that wasn't set correctly. But there's no need for that because we found the buffer that contains the unpacked payload in memory here. So let's just right click. We'll follow in the memory map here and then we will right click and dump our memory to file here. So we'll dump it to the desktop as stage two. Okay, so we've dumped that out. And now what I wanna do is I wanna open this in a hex editor because I saw that there might be a little bit of extra data on this buffer here. So we can see the MZ is right here and there's some data before the MZ that I'm just gonna delete out. So the MZ starts at the very beginning of the file. So the reason why it looked like that is because this is actually a buffer in memory and the unpacked payload was written somewhere inside there. So there was a little bit of space at the beginning of the buffer that wasn't related to the PE file. And of course, if we're going to treat this like a PE file, it has to start with the magic bytes MZ. So I just trim that off and I'll control S to save it out. We can close this up now. So we don't need this running process anymore. We can kill the debugger. Yeah, no problem. And then we want to take a look at this stage two and see if we can figure out whether that's the payload or whether it needs to be unpacked further. So let's take a look at stage two in PE bear here and see what we've carved out. Hmm, interesting. So, <laughs> so this carved out PE file has no imports. It's got two sections, a uh, resource section, which is super small and a ginormous text section. So looking at this, I'm going to tell you that I think this is not the payload. <laughs> I think this is a packed file. So 
I'm going to load this up in X64 debug and try and unpack this. Now, because we didn't really see what stage this was at in hybrid analysis, I don't know whether this is self-injection or whether this is a remote process injection. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set breakpoints for basically every, like both those techniques. And I'll show you guys how I do that. So this is a good example of going into a payload blind without much information about how to unpack it. Of course, you guys know that I did a walkthrough before, but I won't spoil the fun for you guys to tell you what the technique is, because I think that this is kind of a good example of like what it's realistically like when you're trying to unpack something. So let's close this up. We'll open up our debugger and dive into it. Okay, so we have our P file loaded up here. Oh, and I should also mention over here in our process tree, uh, this was the suspended process that we had from our last run. So I'm actually just gonna right click and uh, kill that process. So that was the process that was started with uh, create process internal and it was started suspended. So I just killed that off. No use having that hanging around, cluttering up the tree here. Okay, so now that we have our P file open, uh, the second stage in our debugger, I'm going to set breakpoints on create process internal, resume thread, write process memory, but I'm also going to set breakpoints on virtual alloc, virtual protect, just to see whether it's doing self injection or remote process injection. So if you guys are interested to know what does self injection look like? Uh, if you check out the last tutorial that I made, I did quite an in-depth uh, description of like how that works and why you set those breakpoints. But in a nutshell, what we're doing is we're going to look and see if they are allocating memory. We're going to look and see what was written into that memory to figure out whether there's a PE file written in there. And if there is, then we're going to know that they're doing self injection. So we're going to focus our analysis on that or unpacking on that technique. So that's what we're setting the two sets of breakpoints, some breakpoints for process injection, some for self injection. <laughs> All right, so we'll set these up. Control G, create process internal, internal W, I'll add a breakpoint on you. Control G, um, resume thread, add a breakpoint on you. Control G on write process memory, add a breakpoint on you. Control G on virtual alloc. Now, virtual alloc, if you guys recall, there's actually some jump code in kernel 32 that jumps to kernel base. So we're just going to follow those jumps because if you guys recall, we want to look at the return, not the entry point from that function because the return has the base address where the memory has been allocated. So we put a breakpoint on the return here. And again, I've covered this in depth in at least two tutorials, which I, I guess I'll link those as well in the video description in case you guys want to go back and, and watch them uh, where I kind of describe the, the reasoning behind why I do this. But basically, when, whenever we hit this return from virtual alloc, EAX is going to have the address of the new segment that's been allocated, the new memory segment. So that's why we set it on return instead of the entry point. And control G on, on virtual protect. Okay, and we'll set it on the entry point here. All right, now that we have our breakpoint set, let's jump forward and see which one of these techniques they're using. All right, let's run. So we get to the entry point, which again is always set, so no big deal, we'll continue on. Ooh, there's a create process internal W here, it's kind of exciting, but if we look here, what are they doing? They're creating, okay, it looks like they've copied this file over into disk check and they're creating it there. Uh, I'm not sure why they're doing that, but let's continue on and we'll see. Ah, <laughs> it ended. <laughs> All right, let's stop this. We'll suspend that process. Maybe there's something I don't quite understand here where there's, they're checking to see whether it's been installed already or something like that. So uh, instead, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kill this process and I'm gonna actually load up the process that they copied over. Sorry, I'll recap that. So they created a process which was just a copy of this binary in a temp directory. And I think what they might have been doing was they might have some sort of check where they, if they know that they're not running in the temp directory, they might like copy it over to the temp directory and then just start it again as kind of like a way to hide it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to, instead of opening the one from the desktop, I'm gonna open the one from the temp directory and I'll, I'll set the same breakpoints and see if we can't uh, get that to work for us. I'm not quite sure why I did this. Again, I, uh, I'm not too worried about it though because it's got a run. <laughs> so, 
So if it's just running itself in the temp directory, it, we, we didn't see it do any process injection. It just started that process after it copied it to the temp directory. I know that it's the same binary, so I'm not worried. We'd, I don't think we missed a step. I think it's just checking to see whether it's in the temp directory or not, or maybe it sets a reg key or something. I'm, I'm not quite sure, but no worries. We'll just use it from the temp directory instead. So I think it was in uh, percent. I'll just go to temp here. I think it was in roaming, app data, roaming, uh, disk check. Yeah, there we go. All right. Let's open you up here. All right. So unfortunately, we have to reset all these breakpoints too. <laughs> I think I'm probably just going to do a magic of video for this one. All right. So through the magic of cinema, all of our breakpoints have now been reset on this new sample or the same sample copied in the temp directory. So let's try this one more time. We'll click run. We go to the entry point, click run again. There we go. <laughs> no more create process internal. Now we get to a return from virtual alloc. So like I was describing before, you would expect to see the newly allocated address in EAX, but it's all zeros here. So that means maybe something has gone wrong with the call. No big deal. We'll just step back from it and keep running and we'll probably expect to see it pop up again. So here we go. So maybe they were just checking to see whether they could allocate or something like that. Maybe they're attempting to allocate to a certain location. So again, so I'm just right clicking here to see if we can follow it in our dump here, but it looks like it's probably just been reserved, not allocated yet. So that's why if you, I should explain that. So basically we saw a virtual alloc being called and we can see that this is the address that was being allocated by virtual alloc. But if we go and look at one F and four zeros here, in our memory map, so 1F and four zeros, we can see that it's reserved, but it's not actually been allocated yet. So we can't uh, follow that in the dump. So what we're expecting to see is we're gonna expect to see another call to virtual alloc for that same address. And at that point, we'll be able to follow the dump. So let's, uh, let's just run forward a bit and we can see that's exactly what happened here. So here's another, this is another return from virtual alloc. Here we have the, the base address, which we can now right click follow and dump. Here we go. So if that happens to you guys where you have a breakpoint on return for virtual alloc, you return from it, you have an address in EAX, but you can't right click and follow in the dump, just check it out in the memory map and see whether it's reserved. So that'll mean that it's not actually allocated yet. And you'll just have to wait for that second call to virtual alloc to actually allocate it. There's some stuff going on under the hood there that, you know, I should probably explain, but I'm not going to because I'm running out of time and I wanted to make this a quick one. But I, I will dive into that probably. I've wanted to make a video on heap versus virtual alloc versus stack memory and how that all works out. So I, I talk about it all the time and I know there's a lot of good tutorials on it, but I, I've never really like put the pieces together between like what you've like learned in computer science versus like what we're actually seeing here in the debugger. So I, I will make a video on that at some point, but I, I don't think this is the video for that. I think this video, I'm just going to stick to the basics of unpacking TrickBot. So now that we have allocated memory, we can actually right click. We're following it in the dump here. So let's click forward a bit. So we've just run and we've hit virtual alloc again, and we can see that they're allocating one and three zeros here, which is a lot of the time that's the first section. That'll be like the first section's virtual address is one and three zeros. So that's probably what they're doing here. And if we look at the memory section that we're following, uh, we don't see an MZ here, but we do see the DOS string. And if we scroll down a little bit, we can see the section table here as well. So what does this mean? This means that they're doing a self injection. They're using virtual alloc to allocate some space in their process. They're writing the PE file unpacked into that memory section, and then they're gonna execute it. So again, I went over this in detail in the last tutorial that I did, which again, I'll link below. So if you guys wanna know all the basics behind how self injection works and how to, you know, what we're doing here, you can follow that tutorial. But in this one, all you need to know is that there's a quick trick here. We'll just follow this memory section in the memory map here. And then we're going to right click and set a breakpoint on execute. And then we can just run until it until we hit that breakpoint. So what that's going to allow us to do is that's going to allow us to not worry about the other breakpoints that we've set because we know that at some point they're going to want to execute this memory that they've allocated that they're writing a PE file into. So we don't have to worry about how they're writing the PE file in. We just have to worry about when they're ready to execute it. That must mean it's completely in there so we can dump it out. So the other thing to keep in mind is that they're writing this in in sections at the virtual address. Remember I said that there's like one and three zeros was where that newly allocated memory was. So see how it's one F one and three zeros. And this section starts at 
one F and four zeros. So that means that this next write is going to happen at one and three zeros. I know that that is normally where the first section would start in a virtual address, so in a mapped PE file. So that means that they're probably writing this in to be executed as a mapped PE file. So that means that when we carve it out, we're going to need to unmap it. So that's just something to keep in mind. So what we can do now is we can go to our breakpoints here. We can turn off all these guys. We'll just turn these guys off. We'll disable, 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 disable. And then we have our one shot execute on memory there, which we're gonna keep because that's gonna tell us that everything's unpacked and that we're ready to rock and roll. So let's run here until we hit that breakpoint, boom, hit that breakpoint right here. And so that means that they tried to execute at 1FD7A6, which is inside this 1F section. So that means that we were correct in assuming that they're running a PE file in there and they're gonna execute it. So now all we have to do is just right click, dump memory to file, dump it to our desktop, as stage three. And I'm gonna actually keep that memory address on there. Cause remember I said that this is in its mapped format. So remember when we unmap it, we may have to rebase it as well. And so having that memory address in there is gonna be helpful if we have to do that. So let's save that to the desktop. And so now we don't have a need for the debugger anymore. We can kill that. Yep, I'm gonna exit. And let's take a look at our dump file in PE bear and see if we can't unmap it. All right, so the first thing I wanna do is I want to make the raw addresses match up with the virtual addresses because of course we've dumped it out in its map format, which means that each section is gonna start at the virtual address, not the raw address. So if we wanna make the unmapped format look the same as the map format, that means we have to copy the virtual addresses back to the raw addresses. Then what we need to do is make the size of the raw addresses align with the sections because of course we've copied out between each section is completely full even if it wasn't full before now it's full of null bytes so we need to adjust the raw size so that it aligns completely with the distance between the sections okay and now let's look at the base address here so let's go to the optional header. We'll look at the image base here. And this is where saving that section address number comes in handy. So see how the image base hasn't been adjusted? This is the original image base. Because it's being run from one F and four zeros, that means that if they've run the relocations table, which they obviously have, because they're ready to execute, everything's gonna be relocated for one F and four zeros in the PE file. So we need to change this base address to be the same so that everything matches matches up properly. So this is just the last thing we need to do and then we should be ready to up and roll. Okay, so I always like to check the imports because it means if, if I've misaligned something, if I aligned it incorrectly, the imports table will be all messed up. So it'll have like, it'll have the number of imports but the names will be incorrect or it'll be garbled up. So that's always like a quick check that I do after I've like unmapped a P file uh, using this method. So I come in here and, and it looks like everything's pretty good actually and it looks like you know, everything's aligned properly. I'm going to save this out to the desktop, save executable as stage three dot exe. Okay, so here we've got it here. Now, also looking at these imports, it looks like these are probably imports for payload. I mean, it looks like these are you know, there's a lot more of them. It also looks like based on the sections here that this could be the payload. You know, usually in a packed file, you're not gonna see all of these nice sections. You'll probably just see like a big one or like two and one of them is gonna be really big. <laughs> so in this case, uh, it looks like maybe we have the payload here. And a quick way to tell, I guess there's two ways to tell. We could open up an IDA and take a look at it, but I don't think we need to do that because based on some blog posts, some reporting on TrickBot, we know that the configuration file is actually stored in one of the resources. And we even have this tool, like I mentioned earlier from the Kevin the Hermit GitHub project that will decrypt the configuration file from the resources. So what I'm gonna do instead of opening an IDA, I'm going to just close this out, gonna open resource hacker here, kind of cool tool just for looking at PE resources. And I'll drag our stage three exe over here. And in the resources, we have two resources here, one kind of tiny one, and one bigger one, which might actually be the configuration file. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna dump this out, save as a uh, binary file 
on the uh, desktop and I'm going to call it res.bin. Save that out. So now that I have the resource pulled out of the binary, I'm going to hop back over to my host VM where I have a Python installed with all the dependencies for this script, which I forgot to install in this VM. So I'm going to have to hop back over to the host. I'll just copy this resource.bin over and I'll run it. I'll run the same tool, trickbot.py. Hopefully we've extracted the config. You can tell by my confidence that I think we probably have. So uh, give me one sec. We'll flip over and take a look. Okay, so do an ls here. So we have our resource.bin and our trickbot script. So we'll do Python trickbot resource. Hey. <laughs> so there is the decrypted configuration file. And we can see that this is this is the version here. And the G tag is ser0516. So that's the variant that we're looking at here. There it is, how to unpack the two stages, the two packers for this TrickBot sample. And again, those stages aren't necessarily linked to TrickBot. They're just the packers that were used in this case, and they can vary from case to case. However, those two techniques that I showed you, the process injection PE carving technique and the self-injection PE carving technique, those are both gonna be the same, probably pretty much to, regardless of whatever packer they use, they're probably gonna be able to use one of those two techniques to extract TrickBot. And now that you know about this awesome tool, the Kevin the Hermit Rat Decoders project on GitHub, you can extract configuration files from TrickBot once you've unpacked it yourselves. What I encourage you to do is grab some of those other samples from malwaretrafficanalysis.net. Again, I'll link to the site below. I'll, leave, I'll link to this sample, but I'll also link to his site. And you can go and practice this with some of the other TrickBot samples and see whether the packers are the same. Let me know. Are they using the same packer? Do the same techniques work for other samples or are they different? I'm super interested. And like I said before, I'm super busy, so I don't really have time to take a look at them. But if you guys take a look, let me know. I'm very curious to know. And also a shout out to SysOpFB. I don't know whether he wants people to know his real name or not, so I won't mention it, but he's the one who actually originally wrote this TrickBot extractor, the, the configuration extractor that's being used in the Kevin the Herbert project. So definitely kudos to him. I'll Again, I'll link to his GitHub and stuff below as well. His code is in the Kevin the Hermit project, so you only have to go there, but I'll link to his just for a shout out to him for the awesome work that he's done here. So just kind of a short, quick tutorial. Again, I didn't go too deep into these different techniques because I have covered them in previous tutorials, and I encourage you guys to watch those. If I skipped some parts here you were unclear about, go back and watch the earlier tutorials where I do these step-by-step -step for each different technique. Hopefully that kind of fills in the pieces. If there's still missing pieces or I skipped a step, be sure to comment below and I'll respond if you have any questions about what I've shown you guys here today. Also remember, uh, do comment if you go and take a look at the other TrickBot samples and you unpack them. Let me know what the packers are, what packing techniques they're using for those ones. I'm super curious about that as well. So with that, we will probably post another video probably two weeks from now. So stay tuned for that. We have a few interesting ones in the queue that we need to do, but they take a bit more time. And until next week, the week after, <laughs> keep exposing the mechanics behind the malware and stay curious.